In this video we're going to be looking at standardized scores and using the standard normal distribution. So here's the formula which allows you to standardize a certain value. You have your value x, you subtract the mean and this letter here mu represents the mean and you divide it all by the standard deviation shown using this letter sigma here and that gives you the z value which is the standardized value. So let's have a look how this standardized value works and what it means. So here we've got two students and in a test Bernard scored 70% and Anita scored 80%. So can we use these scores to decide who did better? Well, the answer is no, because they'd done two different tests at two different schools. So it wouldn't be fair to compare the scores as they are. However, if we standardize them, we can then compare them. Now, in order to standardize them, if you remember the formula, you need the mean and the standard deviation for each of them. So here we've got the mean and the standard deviation for Bernard's class in his school. And we've got the mean and the standard deviation for Anita's class in her school. Now we've got all the information we need to standardize each of their scores. Then we can finally actually compare their scores. So here's the formula which allows you to standardize again. So we're going to take Bernard's score, which is 70, the x value, and then we subtract the mean. And finally, we divide through by the standard deviation, which is 1.2. And that gives us 4.2. Let's go ahead and do the same for Anita. So we take a score. We subtract the mean, which is 70, and divide through by the standard deviation, 2.5. And that gives us 4. Now we can compare the scores. Now after standardizing, we can see that Bernard did better compared to his class and his test. So relatively, we can see that Bernard performed better than Anita. Because it could be that his test was harder. Now, once you've standardized your values, whether it be scores in a test or something else, these standardized values, the Z values, because when we standardize them, we call them Z values, they have a normal distribution also. And they're normally distributed with the mean as zero and the standard deviation as one. This is the standard normal distribution. So let's go ahead and see where we might use the standard normal distribution. So here we've got a normal distribution. We know that x is distributed normally with the mean mu and the variance 5 squared. And we need to work out the mean as it's not been given to us. So to be able to do these questions, we need an extra piece of information. So here we've got the probability of x less than 30, but we don't need to work out, it's given us the answer. It's 0 0.91924. So there's nothing to work out here, it's all been given to us. But this piece of information is going to allow us to work out what mu is. And whenever you have an unknown like this, you need that piece of information. So how do we start? Well, we're going to standardize it first. So how do we do that? So wherever it said x, we're going to write z. So we're not going to write probability of x less than 30. We're going to write z less than, and it's not going to be 30 anymore. We're going to standardize that 30 value. So let's go ahead and do that. So to standardize it would be 30. Remember, you subtract the mean. And we don't know the means, we're just leaving as minus mu. Divided by the standard deviation, 5. So we standardize that piece of information they gave us. And now it's in terms of z. And remember, z has this distribution here. A mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. 
So with the original question, of course, we couldn't use a calculator because we had an unknown value mu. However, now we can because it has a standard normal distribution and we know the mean and the standard deviation for that. The mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, so now I want you to look at what we've got here. And it's all to do with inverse normal distribution. So hopefully you've watched that video very recently. So think to yourself, what value do you get if you do the inverse norm of this value 0 0.91924? Well, you get the value of this thing here. And when you did the inverse normal distribution video, of course, there was just an unknown letter there. And what would happen is you do the inverse norm of 0 0.91924 and you work out the value of the unknown, that unknown A. Of course, it's not A here. We have a whole expression. So when we do the inverse norm of this value, 0 0.91924, the answer is what this expression equals to. And the calculator gave us 1.4. So this whole expression is equal to 1.4. Normally you just had an unknown value here, like we showed you with A, and you just worked out what A is. But of course this time we just worked out this whole expression is 1.4. But that's okay, because now we can work out what mu is. We just got a little bit of algebra to do. So just pause the video and do that. And you should have got mu as 23. Now I didn't go through the algebra steps because I know you guys are on it. Because I know most people doing this video are in the second year of A level. So here we've got another question. And instead of not knowing what mu is, we don't know what sigma is. When I say sigma, I'm talking about this letter here, which represents the standard deviation. So in this question, we don't know what the standard deviation is. But again, they've given us a piece of information. So let's do what we did in the last question. Let's go ahead and standardize it. Here's a standardizing formula again. And once you standardized it, you should have got this. Of course, the x turned to z. And we also standardized that value 5. We did 5 minus mu, the mean, over the standard deviation, sigma, which is 5 minus 8 over sigma. We can work out what 5 minus 8 is, so let's just simplify that. Of course, we're using the standard normal distribution now, so I've just put that distribution there again. So simplifying 5 minus 8, of course, gave us minus 3 over sigma. Now we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to do the inverse norm of 0 0.06681. And doing the inverse norm of that value tells us what minus 3 over sigma is. And we get minus 3 over sigma is minus 1.5. And finally, we can just rearrange that to work out what sigma is, the standard deviation. And we get the standard deviation is 2. So it wasn't too bad. OK, so now we've got a bit of a chunky question. In this question, we don't know what mu is, the mean, and we don't know what the standard deviation is, sigma. And in these cases, you don't need one piece of information, you need two pieces, and we've got that here. So let's go and standardize both of them. Again, here's our formula to standardize and the distribution of the standard normal. So if you standardize the first one, 35 minus the mean over the standard deviation, and of course, x becomes z now, and we can do the same to the other one. So we've standardized both of our pieces of information. And remember that number at the end doesn't change. The first one's equal to 0 0.975, and it stayed like that. And same for the other one. That bit doesn't change. OK, so we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to do the inverse norm of each one. When we do the inverse norm of 0 0.975, we find out what 35 minus mu over sigma is. And when we do the inverse norm of 0 0.1469, we work out what 15 minus mu over sigma is. So using a calculator, the inverse norm of 0 0.975 is 1.96. So of course, 35 minus mu over sigma is 1.96. And the same for the other one using a calculator. 
So now what have we got here? We've got two equations with two unknowns. So that's simultaneous equations. Hopefully you spotted that. So let's go ahead and solve our simultaneous equations. Now the first thing I'll do is times both sides by sigma in both equations. It just tidies things up a little bit. Now you should be used to working out simultaneous equations with your calculator. Now with the lot calculators, there's a particular form you need to get your simultaneous equations in. So for each one, what I do is I'd, pl I'd plus mu and move it to the other side. And then your equations will be in the form your calculator likes receiving it in. If you don't want to do that and you want to do it manually, I just simply subtract the two equations. Something like this. And that gets rid of the mu. Because minus mu minus minus mu ends up cancelling each other off it becomes minus mu plus mu. So let's go ahead and work that out. And we get 20 equals 3.01 sigma. And from that, we can just work out what sigma is. And we get sigma, the standard deviation is 6.645. Just put that into any of the other equations you've got and you'll get what mu is, the mean. And you should have got the mean as 22 to the nearest whole number. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.